When I first got Amplitude 5, it came bundled with Tonex Max. I've been so busy exploring just what Amplitude has to offer, I never explored the Tonex component until this week. I've only dipped my toe in those waters and I experienced a bit of confusion. I think I figured a few things out, so I thought it was worth a video. Tonex is an entire product group, but in this video, I just want to look at how to use various types of Tonex models inside Amplitude. There is a separate Tonex app, and I'm not going to use it in this tutorial. I'll be sticking in this video to the IK Multimedia supplied models. Like AT5, Tonex is available in multiple versions. If you don't have Tonex yet, the Tonex CS version is free. It will give you both 20 models created by IK and you can download 20 user models from ToneNet. So that should be enough to both learn how to use it and get some benefit from it. The Tonex Max package includes 1,166 models and unlimited user tone model downloads. So it's a lot to explore. I think it's worth mentioning that when it comes to effects, Tonex doesn't support any time or phased based effects. So that's going to include delay, chorus, phaser, flanger, and possibly others. To get those effects, you will still use the AT supplied pedals. This video won't include any guitar noodling or guitar playing of any kind. My purpose is not to demonstrate the sounds in Tonex, it's to explain how to use them in Amplitube. I'm not going to walk through installing Tonex, but it is very similar to installing Amplitube and can be done through the IK product manager, which you already have. If you haven't installed AT5, you should watch my first video, which has examples of how to both download the IK product manager and Amplitube to get started. Let's start by just using a modeled stomp box. If you switch to the pedal section of AT, all the way at the top in prime real estate location, you'll see the Tonex stomp virtual pedal. The icon mimics the actual physical pedal, but don't be fooled, this virtual pedal is meant to host just stomp models, not any of the Tonex models like the real pedal does. We can drag this stomp over to our chain, and there it is. By default, it selected a model of an Ibanez TS-808 overdrive pedal. To change models, click the edit button. Now click the downward triangle. The icon is the first of many what I find to be unintuitive UX choices uh, that made my first experience here confusing, but I'll do my best to avoid editorializing about this too much and just walk you through the steps. You can scroll up and down and browse the list or use the search box in the upper left. The search box immediately filters the pedals on all columns that match what you type. That's super convenient. The search is not case sensitive, which I also like. And even though I'm not playing, as you click on different elements in the browse window, the sound does change so you can hear what each effect sounds like. Once you identify the stomps you like, you can favorite them. The star at the top left allows you to quickly filter down to just your favorites. The filter icon allows you to filter by more options. It appears to be a generic filter designed for all of Tonex, not just this stomp effect. So all the items in light gray are disabled for the Tonex stomp. We can filter by the type of effect. Let's select EQ. In the lower right, we have two pedals. These filters are all additive, so I can select more than one. I'll also choose fuzz, and now we have 49 pedals. Let me toggle off fuzz and go back to just the EQ pedals. Now you can click the X, which represents a close slash done button, not a cancel button. We are back to the browser list with just our EQ pedals. The favorite filter at this point will show me the intersection of my favorites with the filter that is applied. Since I haven't favorited any EQ pedals, the list is empty. Let me clear the type filter. I can either just click the EQ option again or use the clear all button. You can sort on any column in the browser. And the search will look for words in all of the columns. When you've selected a row in the browser and are done, click the close icon again in the upper middle and your selected stomp will be shown. Part of the interface shown here is a carryover from the Tonex UI. You can select any of the buttons at the top. I'll go over them quickly, but I do feel like everything here can be done elsewhere in AT and in a more visible manner. So I don't think I will be using any of these features. They are much more critical when they're being used without AT5 or when you're loading configured models into the physical Tonex pedal. 
You can think of this series of buttons and arrows as another processing chain inside this single pedal. The first one with slider icons is called the advanced parameters and is for adjusting EQ. And it works a little differently from the others. The post button is not a label. When it's lit, the EQ settings are applied late in the chain after the reverb effect. If it's off, it's applied after the noise gate. If your pedal has bass, mid, treble, or presence controls, the buttons here will affect those controls on the pedal's UI. With many pedals, the UI hides that part of the pedal, but for this pedal, you can operate both controls at the same time, which is why I selected it. The advanced parameter button does not turn this effect on or off like the other effects. Uh, use the mix button to do that. Another thing worth paying attention to here is the reset chain button. Note it doesn't say reset advanced parameters because, well, that would be hard to fit on a button, but for some reason they decided it made more sense to bury this inside the advanced parameters button and it affects the entire chain. Oops, I'm editorializing again, sorry. When you're done with the advanced parameters, click the button again to get back to your pedal. The noise gate, compressor, and reverb controls all have two buttons. The left side turns the effect on and off. The right side will open the UI to allow you to adjust the parameters. The power button will also turn the effect on and off, and you can see it's linked to the left side chain button. The noise gate leads to an empty box, which we'll discuss when we get to the compressor. Next is our pedal, and we've already looked at the browser, but the left side again will turn the pedal on and off, the same as the on-off button on the pedal. The compressor has two unique features. First on the right is a meter that will give you a visual indication of the compressor in action. When the post button is off, the compressor is placed before the pedal, and up in the chain, it moves the location to show you that. When it is on, it's after the pedal. This is a nice little UX feature. I do have to wonder why they didn't do something similar with the advanced parameters feature. The reverb has a drop down menu. Yep, this time the icon really is a drop down. You can choose among three spring reverbs, room, or plate. The parameters are the same for all. The color knob has darker in the counterclockwise direction and brighter in the clockwise direction. We can do something very similar in terms of processing with modeled amps. To do that, we need to switch to our AMP browser and drag over the Tonex AMP. We get a warning about the Tone model having a cabinet, and we'll look at two ways to deal with that in a minute. The browser at the top center works just like it did for pedals. I would guess the biggest difference is the search filters. They are all enabled now. Notice that the stomp boxes are enabled. This means you can use a stomp box in your AMP slot if you want. There are five broad categories of models in Tonex. Amplifiers with cabinets, amplifiers with cabinets and stomp pedals. This is called complex rig here. Stomp pedals only, amp heads only, and amp heads with stomps. Let's filter to complex rigs. Like the stomp browser, you can sort on any column and search across any of the data shown here. Again, use the close icon to exit the browser. We don't have an edit button here like we did in the stomp box. Instead, we use the knob icon in the upper right. We are back to a familiar looking chain view, but now instead of a single pedal area, we have both an amp and a cabinet area. And this is one place you can address the warning about cabinets. If you have a cabinet in your normal chain that you want to keep, turn off the cabinet here. Alternately, if you want the modeled cabinet, you can bypass the AT cabinet. If you want, you can leave them both on or turn them both off. If you notice an amp sounds really funny, double check your cabinet settings. When you are done here, click the X icon to hide the chain controls. Well, there you have the basics of using the Tonex features from inside Amplitude. There's a lot more to the Tonex group of products, so I'll try to get a video about the Tonex software itself and more about the Tonex sharing site for getting user-created models. Until next time, rock in peace.